Well, love from love, hope from hope, and peace from peace. Praise ye the Lord, because he is our majesty of majesties, our, our carpenter of the ages. And in this hour, I'm holding up a, a church. And this is a church that I went to for many, many years. Uh, it is a church called Windsor Christian Fellowship, founded by this this old guy. He's a little older than me. This is one of the best preachers, uh, charismatic, that I have ever heard. Uh, this is Mr. Reverend Cimitero out of uh, Windsor. And uh, Rick, Pastor Rick, uh, has had a great run. He's retired now, and the church is in the uh, hands of his son. And so I'm going to tell you about a little experience. I've talked with the father, I've talked with the son, and uh, I have a praise report about uh, a, a servant of peace. And that servant of peace is his son for the time being, which is this guy. He's actually being very reasonable with me, and I will be reasonable with him. This is uh, RJ Cimitero, if you can see his uh, face. And he is the senior pastor in these days. So here's what happened. Um, I wrote a book. Gospel of the Dove. I never could give it away. I never could um, anything. It's equivalent to uh, um, how you say probably the the prophet uh, who wrote Jesus, the Son of Man, and I'm talking about Cahill Gabran, a beautiful poetry, prose in motion. But uh, I found rejection everywhere, and that frustrated me. But uh, following the way of the eye of love. I came to have my eyes totally open, and I've known my identity for 30 years. So it came to pass that uh, in, to the father and then more so to the son, I met privately with both, more so with RJ. And um, I was very frustrated because I could never get the time of day from anybody about any of my writings. I truly have done everything in vain. Isaiah 49, 4 was always of me. Christ the Lord, even when he paid for our, prayed for our unity in John 17, he was not wasting one word because he knew he was sending unity because when we have unity, we have no more enemies. So long story short, uh, I'll roll the clock uh, back and forward. About three years ago, uh, I, I could get no response from anyone in the middle of Parkwood Gospel Temple. I, to the top of my lungs, fuck, fuck, excuse my French. And I was angry. And I got Pastor Hazard out there real quick. And so tonight I was told uh, from an event three years ago because I did plaster uh, uh, the word apostate on their church and maybe they never figured out that was me but uh, that was me and they have been fully apostate uh, because they don't believe the word of, po of um, prophecy as it is written they have changed and they have leaned onto their own understanding not just this church but all churches so i'm not singling out this church it's a very loving church uh, and i highly recommend everyone to go there i am a person of reason and uh, the reason uh, that I would tell anybody to lead that church is the wheat and the tares shall not grow together any longer. The mystery of God is over in these days. And if we follow the electricity of the, the Lord's love for all of us, he has a brand new direction for us to go in. And um, this church uh, for... 20 years, my wife, Linda, and myself, we've gone there year after year. Our kids were all enrolled in uh, private school there. And, and so long story short is that uh, uh, it was a good place, a good home for us for many years. But because of my frustrations, never being able to get anybody to listen to anything that I had to say and pay any attention, and I'm still in the same place, 
Uh, because of that, I got quite irate, and I did cause a scene at uh, that church at one point. So tonight, I go there with uh, Linda, and we have made up recently. She's been on some meds, and we've been working stuff out, and I, I love her with all of my heart, and I want to help her through life as, as she helps me through life. So long story short, we come to the church this evening, and I was, uh, first a lady came up to me, one of the usher, and asked me if I, I was Stan, and I said, no, <laughs> my name is Dan, I'm not a Stan, so she just wixed her merge. So she came back over to me a second time, uh, and I think this time she said, are you Daniel? And she said, well, would you please come with me? And I first said to her, uh, no, I would rather not. I'm here for the service. Uh, and I knew this was just, and I understand why the incident happened. So long story short, I was told to leave. And I told them it's not a threat, it's a promise. I will make a scene here. You're going to have to call the police and so forth and so on, and I would have. Um, bottom line is the pastor, RJ, intervened and came over and said that uh, it's time uh, that him and I had a meeting and we would come to an agreement, and I'm agreeing to be on good behavior. But I have walked up recently to three pastors with my thumb up my nose, put my face about that far from their nose, and disgusted with them. Because in this hour, God is disgusted with his viper, uh, pharisaical children. I've heard RJ, for example, preach that there will never be any more revelation upon planet Earth. And this is the purest heresy. Now, I can go to a church that has still preaching heresy. Everybody believes they're heresy. It's not heresy to them. But the truth is, how is all things going to be restored uh, without uh, revelation of revelation? It's poppycock. It's, it's never been. It's pure balderdash. And uh, that's why the Lord says in Malachi 2 that all of those that are ignoring his most perfect preparation of his peace, that he would uh, allow a, a shit pie to be thrown into their faces for all standing opposed to his word. And Malachi 3, one, the message unto all mankind has come. I am the latter day Elijah, the latter day Daniel. That is my name, uh, Daniel Fletcher Owsley. And uh, I've known my identity for a long time and I've put it all together. And so wide is the way unto hell paid by our conditional love as we have practiced committing blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in this hour, it is time to realize that God has loved each and every one of us uh, the same, not loving one above the others. And Mickey and many both say it's time to hold out your hands and receive from the Lord that which he would place in them. If you're shallow as a glass of water, he could never pour out his bottomless ocean, the crystalline ocean of the sapphire sea on high. Uh, the crystalline sapphire sea that is the of the sea of his forgetfulness of his forgiveness as he pours out his spirit upon all flesh. And so th these have been days of festering fears and tears, but our perfect love alone can cast all that out. Now, as it is written in Revelation 6, the white horseman of the apocalypse has a bow, and he's always needed an arrow, and that arrow is one who was hidden in his quiver for the time of the end after the mystery of God was over, after the message of Malachi 3, 1 came, and the obsolescence of all faith, as Hebrews 8, 4 told. For the Lord God is saying, for all born-again people who have not committed blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, to all people who have their uh, uh, love alive as a child, all who are his, for he is the Lord God of all mankind, and the true God is the Lord Jesus of all, all the good shepherd of all the flocks of man. 
Christianity as well as this particular church has a false Jesus and a false God that is not the God of all mankind. See, to be the God of all mankind, that's like saying I'm the God of all Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That meant when God said that they are mine uh, and uh, uh, I am theirs. Nothing's going to remove them from my hand, as the Bible says, uh, with their palms wide open. And so in this hour, Christianity does not have the God of all mankind, which is what God declares and Jesus declares the unity of uh, John 10, because he is and always has been the Lord God of uh, uh, the Good Shepherd over all the flocks of man. Secondly, uh, Christians have a God that has only conditional love, that only loves them if or because or why, uh, and the judgment, and uh, the, they're under the law, and the true God, which is truly uh, the true God, only has unconditional love as his word says. For he says unto all mankind, because early Christians, they switched they switched it. Um, they, Jeremiah 31 1 says it would be given the covenant to Israel in the latter days. And it has by me. And now they are Chrislam, Isaiah 62 2, a new name that has come unto them. Uh, and in these days they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54 uh, 54 3. Because these are the days of Isaiah 52 where God's salvation may now be broadcast and publicized to all mankind. Everyone, no one gets saved. Everyone is saved unless they commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is the unforgivable sin of letting your love to wax totally cold. And then you would be cast out into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. So it's time to open our hearts and open our minds. And so in this hour of love's greatest power, uh, it shall all happen not by power nor by might, but by the spirit of love shall all things be accomplished. And so in this hour, it's time to get with the right program. And the right program is one of praise. And the right program is to visit WCF with the expectation that they are Pharisees and their church uh, offers the same death that has been being dished out in these days of the revelation of uh, desolate heritages, Isaiah 49, 8. For the truest truth has always been that all those who love are born again of God and know him because he is love. Even if that unconditional love, and it is the divine unconditional love, even if that love is as the size of a, a, a grain of a seed of a mustard seed, and God's mercy is abundant. All calling upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And we have all called upon his name. And so in this hour, it is time to realize that the inheritance has been given. And in the latter days, the veil has now been pulled off this latter day mountain of Isaiah 25, covered with food. Who will come and feed the master's household meat while the master is away, uh, says uh, um, Matthew 24, 22. Uh, but it, uh, actually verse 45, so many verses up there. But the word of God is awesome. And the truest word of his for all people is a word of our total equality. For he says unto all people, I am your God, you are my people. I have forgiven your iniquity and I will never remember it. Sending Satan to the pit for a thousand years in accordance with Daniel 12, uh, 1 and uh, Revelation 12 in the latter days because he has been the accuser of the brethren and God cannot uh, uh, be accused anymore because God is promising us from the bottom of his heart of heart never to remember our sin. And so in this hour as the veil is stripped from all nations, this everlasting gospel must go again to all people, to all tribes, to all nations. And so it is time to get with the program of love to remove the scales that have covered our eyes. I, I cannot condemn a church like a WCF where I am raised because all men 
have been covered with the gross darkness of the ignorance of love. And that is the what needs to be removed from off of our hearts of hearts. And I will be right back. I am back. One like Moses, if the restoration does not happen of our carpenter of the ages, Jesus Christ cannot come back. The truth is the Jesus of Christianity has been a respecter of men, loves them best. If you don't believe like them, then he's going to hate you forever and burn you until you're crispy critters. In spite of the truth, uh, it doesn't matter. And so uh, it is foretold that one like Moses would come forth. Uh, another gospel of creation. And here you go. Get ready. Because in these days of Elijah, all that was hidden will now be revealed. And as we get with that program, we can look to the everlasting gospel that must go again to all people, to all tribes of creation. And this is uh, one coming to you, one like Moses am I. And if you don't believe it after this, this is what the Lord inspired me to write by the unction of the Holy Spirit. I have had open-eyed visions. I've been, I've heard the audible voice of, of God in my life. Before the beginning was the light. Now this has the opposite uh, of what Moses said. Before the beginning was the light, nor was there anything dark anywhere that could ever seen by anything. For that light walked boldly in the image of the Almighty, and the blinding rays of his word, uh, one like the Son of God was there, and he was always ablaze with such a glorious fire of love that nothing under his glorious smile of true abundance ever could have withered away towards any kind of eternal lifelessness. Neither was there any blackness anywhere within any distant corner of all that once was, and nor were there any places of darkness, any, any uh, place where our most lofty Adonai was. Even the nothingness of some distant shadows couldn't exist around his unending presence, which filled up every space within all infinity. And the Trinity's light filled absolutely everything unto overflowing. For the brightness of our Trinity of faith, hope, and love could never be hid from any uncreated creation, which was still an unacted upon thought within Jehovah's mind. And it came to pass that he who is Allah, Elohim, Adonai, he has many names, then said, let us now speak forth darkness, which shall only come from our absence alone. And our God had then brought forth a, a form of darkness, which was born out of the newly created shadow that was suddenly being laid out across every place that they were not. Uh, and so the mystery was being born by the word of love. And yet at the very same time in the places where they were not, there also were they, was Elohim our Lord God Almighty, by way of the unity of their everlasting spirit, who always went before our living word of God, uh, and the most amazing illumination of his very own overflowing glory of the resplendence of his unconditional love, reflecting off the sapphire sea, the bottomless one of the forgiveness of his forgetfulness. Twas therefore the supernatural time for the order of all things, the natural order to come forth in a most orderly way, which was sure to be methodical, organized in its sudden unveiling within the natural realm, supernaturally and yet naturally did it come. And then this world was created with very great age, ancient on day one, just as uh, Adam and Eve had no belly buttons. And, but that prince of Egypt, Mo Moses, was instructed to record the word of God for all to see and ponder. But when he wrote in Genesis 1-3 that God created light, he was only talking about the sun of our Earth's solar system and not about God's most amazing illumination of the glory 
of his love that existed before the darkness and all that came forth was made from his love and so in this hour it is time to understand uh, the truest truth that creation came forth from the word of love and life alone and in the beginning the Lord God Almighty created the outer spaces of heaven along with many heavens within that heaven and space was without division for the emptiness of nothingness filled that void unto uh, its fullness nor could any more space be contained within its endless borders which reach far out towards the farthest places where our spirit of the Lord was from the time before everlasting ever had a chance to come forth and so it was a time of everlasting divinity flowing uh, and the Word of God had absolute control and the space within that space was without substance and gross darkness was upon those unseen spaces and places and the Spirit of God then moved across across all of that darkest space within the very same moment as Elohim said what we made is good let us now create some distant lights in diverse places so within but a split moment of a moment everything imaginable suddenly came forth with a very loud bang and that explosive word of creation never returned void unto that carpenter of the ages whose rugged hands had built everything uh, imaginable and so it came to pass that out of nothing came something and we must be as the wise servants who will fill our cup unto overflowing with the truest truth that it is time for new revelation and the Bible says of new revelation that all prophecy must be inspected most carefully and all that's good must be embraced Muhammad said that we have none no ground to stand upon none of us unless we stand upon the gospel the law and all revelation coming to the Lord God but there is no faith on planet earth in regards to prophecy of me uh, Sir Isaac Newton foretold the end time Elijah coming forth insisting on his literal interpretations of Bible prophecy admits much clamor and opposition and if this were to be true what I'm preaching the world would have the kingdom age and wouldn't that be terrible and so it's time to realize if a tree is falling in the forest does it really make a sound the earth, even the rocks itself, are crying out and making a joyful noise unto the Lord because the electrons and the protons are always in motion. Nor was there anything yet made that could even hear that boom when the great bang came forth. And with all authority, the Lord Jehovah then spoke unto his Messiah, Jesus, Isa Yeshua, the Word, as the Holy Spirit instantly moved right across heaven to accomplish the most divine word of creation which God's living word did gladly say and our Lord God our God had then saw that those lights were very good as they unexpectedly blazed away with blinding rays streaming from those new shining suns of countless galaxies within countless universes which all, ran all throughout the grace Grace vastness, it ran throughout the great vastness of forever onwards, all the way towards the most holy place of all, where infinity begins and ends within our Lord's all-knowing mind. So it is time to realize even the beginnings of earth have not been like people had thought. Evolution has been totally disproved at this channel. Uh, not only did uh, Charles Darwin fully recant evolution but now you can google uh, t-rex blood cells and see them still in the blood cell of the t-rex because this world was made with very great age watch my video on marco polo as he describes t-rex uh, caught uh, right under his own watch and so in this hour christ was full of praise 
for Yahweh through the spirit of prophecy which was flowing. And it came to pass that our Father God during creation then spoke unto himself as the living word, his only non-created son. And he said unto our Lord God, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness, is the scepter of your kingdom. And the Lord has called me as Shiloh, one whose eyes are red and dull of wine, one who has milky white teeth, who has uh, the scepter of all kingdom age authority, as Genesis 49, 12. I am the alcoholic of Habakkuk 2. The wise shall live by my faith, because there is no damn good man, not even one. Romans 3, 10. No one becomes a good man. I don't care how hard you try. We are all still no good. It is Christ only within us that makes us good. And so in this hour, I am the alcoholic of Zechariah 3, that... Uh, surely stood before the Lord covered with his own puke, the writer of the everlasting uh, gospel, the flying scroll of Zechariah 5, Revelation 14. I am the writer, uh, Isaiah predicted, line by line, the precept by precept, with the strong and mighty one come forth as a destroying storm, Jeremiah 1.10, Haggai 2.2, pulling down distortion alleys, removing the veil from off all the nations. Isaiah 41, uh, the, the little Isaiah 4, 20, uh, 25, uh, the Latter-day Mountain, where God would remove the gross darkness of Micah 4, of religiosity. Now will come the shattering of the power of the holy people, Daniel 12, 7, because God's word was only closed till the time of the end, Daniel 12, 9, because the message of Malachi 3, 1 had to come forth, the same message that causes the obsolescence of all faith on earth, Hebrews 8, I am your God, you are my people, and when you hear that, then Satan would be removed, as Daniel 12 and Revelation 12 says, for this hour. And so it came about that our Lord God Almighty then called the remarkable light of those distant stars illumination, which were fiery places where the weird phenomenon of the blackest black holes would eventually go. And it was then a shining moment when our Trinity looked hard and wide over absolutely everything they had done, and they were very glad. Twas also the most stupendous hour for time itself to come forth from out of the absence of many ticks from where no clocks ever talked before. Creation was suddenly overflowing, and God said, let us fill the heavens with diversity, with nothing being as another. And so was it done. Within an instant of an instant did it come to pass. And so in this hour, uh, it is such an exciting time. And um, so in this hour, uh, we must look to the kingdom of God. And then only then all things would be added unto us. And so it came about that that fiery uh, place came forth. And it was a moment of glory. And so uh, I lost my place here. And so it came about that the Lord then said, let us now fill the heavens with diversity. And so it was done. And then all of a sudden throughout the heavens, it suddenly held countless gas giants, planets, moons, and multitudes of smaller pl planetoids. And everything was spiraling. The universe, the Milky Way, was spiraling. Even some asteroids, comets, and meteors came forth as shimmering stars so that all of creation could make heartfelt wishes. And man, when that beauty came forth, it was like this, magnified by his love. And he spread out this world, and he caused life to come forth. First came Adam and Eve. Then came the dinosaurs through the corruption uh, of the satanic ones of Nephilim, of uh, Genesis 6. Those are the days of the monsters of the book of giants of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Read it yourself and weep not for the misunderstandings. For these are the days when the mystery is now revealed and the first is last and last is first. And the seventh trumpet sounded first, and all nations have now become the Lord. 
as it is written in Isaiah 54, 3. And in this hour, praise the Lord that his arms have never been too short to save. That has been part of the mystery of God and the truest truth, just as there has never been any difference between Hebrew and Jews, uh, as it is written in the Bible. There has never been any difference between anyone born again who has their love alive as a little child. So I say, come out of the land of the walking dead where your love has become a noun instead of a verb when you were a, uh, but a child. Unless we inherit the kingdom of God, we cannot, uh, unless we become like a little child, we cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Know ye not that wide is the way uh, to help, and most people are on it, paid with conditional love that was never dedicated, never faithful, never loving, never uh, patient, never long su willing to long suffer at all. That is not love at all. And neither does the conditional love of the so-called false god of Christianity. So let's recap. They got a God that is a, a God of, uh, of a respecter of men, loves them best. Uh, and they have a man-made God of a God of conditional love that has never been loved. So bang, bang, those false right there. And they don't have the God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. I am as a, 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 a sickle uh, for the harvest to tear down all distortionalities so the wise might shine as the stars. And so know in this hour that the when the creation came forth, everything came forth differently. And suddenly nothing that came forth uh, upon that God, that most marvelous wind of power at the word's command was like anything else already made and just as it was written in hebrews 1 2 to 10 just as it was written absolutely absolutely all of the work that had been done had been happily appointed to our lord of the hammer and nail our pre-existent comic cosmic christ and Isa Yeshua, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us again soon. He had the very honored uh, and th thrilled moment uh, when w to make different worlds of great age, all reflecting the trinity of one's age agelessness. And so it's time to get with the understanding of the singularity of the multiplicity of Elohim, which means many. And so in this hour, just as Adam and Eve had no belly buttons, uh, everything that was made reflected the agelessness of forever uh, past, uh, made from his very own glory of love, which made him the word of love, the most obvious error, error of everything seen or unseen. And Christ was full of praise for Yahweh. And then the Father God spoke, uh, himself uh, as Christ because they are both the same. When you take mercury and you split mercury up in a hundred pieces, it is still mercury. I don't care how many pieces you split God up. The unity of God who is God is still God no matter if he's in one piece and three forms, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, he is one. And he was all God and he was all man. And the Bible says that all coming, saying that God, that Jesus was in the flesh, is of uh, him. And yet the 